Hi, I'm Cash, and welcome back to Cash Talks Football, where we break down all the goals scored in the Premier League. Giving you a bit of a different insight with over my 20-plus years of coaching experience, this is the place to be if you want to learn coaching, become a better player, or learn more about football. Now, we're going to I'll break down a lot of what United were doing in this um, uh, Liverpool game here. But also, the Casemiro factor, and the fact that everyone is dumping everything on Casemiro... He is the he is a problem, but he's not the problem. If you look at all the United problems, there's forty percent. I'd say yeah, maybe Casemiro thirty five, forty percent. But there's so many other problems. And what happens is when you're a bad team, which United are a terrible team, when one player is doing a thing and you can see it and it's so obvious, okay, everyone hops on and goes, "Oh, look at his mistakes! Look at his mistakes! He's the problem! He's the problem!" Well, did you score any goals? No, no, no. Yeah, but he's the one that let the goals in. Mm, okay, but we're going to come on to that because he's not the only problem in conceding these goals. He gives away this pass right here, and we're going to watch this. But this is the, one of the things that happens a lot in football. Is people just think, oh, it's one person's mistake, which it can happen, by the way. One person's mistake can, uh, you know, lead to the goal. But in this scenario, it's not just that. Um, United are just a complete wreck of a team. They've got all sorts of issues. I was watching where Martinez ran off and kicked a player and got a yellow. Like, you just don't do that if you're a good footballer. You just play football. Your footballing does the talking for you, not running up and kicking a player and getting a yellow card because it, there's just no need. Now, you can see what United are doing here. So they're dictating what um, Casemiro's pass is going to be because if you look at his close options, he does have a ball out here, which is probably the right pass, which is the out ball over, over this direction. But you can see everyone is dictating and making little runs. So... It's looking like he's trying to play the ball, uh, trying to play that long ball forward. Okay, that's what he's attempting to do because the runs are dictating the pass. There isn't anyone coming in short to try to give him an option. So he's only really got this pass to play, which he can't do. He just can't. So as he plays this pass, bosh, boff, it gets cut out. Doesn't do a good job on it, and it's easily read. Nicked away by, um, I think this is uh, Ryan Gravenberch, who seemed to have dropped deeper under... Um, uh, slot, I keep saying clop, under slot, and seems to be doing a really, really good job for Liverpool in this sort of new role that he's playing. And they're, they're doing a different thing where they're letting the te other team have possession, and then any time a pass is made, that's the point of pressure. They're not necessarily trying to pass, um, to start the pressure for you to make a bad pass, they're trying to let you pass, and, and that moment they then they start to press and attack, right? So off they go to the races. So he... It's giving the ball away. But this is where I'm going to come down to the point. It's not just all Casemiro. Watch this as we move this forward. Right, bom, 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 bom. We're going to jump forward just a second. And here's the main problem with United. He's given the ball away. Where's the left back? Where's the right back? Where is anybody else? They've all run up the field too, too far. You've got four versus three now because United didn't have the real possession of the ball they weren't really comfortable under it so you can afford when you're comfortable under possession you can bomb on your left wing or your right wing because you've got a bit of structure going on yeah we know we're not going to lose it because we've got numbers around and we're doing stuff you know players are all at the field so when he does lose the ball well what do you think is going to happen there isn't enough players to defend for him there isn't enough options for him to pass to he's not good enough to play that long ball which now he's had to be forced to play because everyone's run up the field and of course it is his fault because he didn't make the pass but everybody's up the field in the first place making him make the pass that he can't make because he's not good enough anymore it's this mad thing in football where people go oh he's done the thing wrong even though our entire shape and system is dictated that you could to do make you do the thing wrong oh it's it's your fault for doing the thing wrong even though no one's come short for you the left back's bombed on the right back's bombed on the other centre midfield is afk he's gone off somewhere else and there's no real good options for you it's your fault for trying to get yourself out of danger by playing the long ball what hold on a minute you know and and that's the madness in football is where people really just go oh he's done the pass wrong it's that thing that i call about nosebleed theory i'm gonna have to start patterning this the nosebleed theory they just go oh nosebleed he didn't get his knee over the ball he didn't make the right pass that's just like saying someone has got a nosebleed we can see they've got a nosebleed we can see that their knee wasn't over the ball we can see he didn't make the right pass but the reasons why his knee's not over the ball is the most important one, which you don't talk about because you don't understand it. It's where his standing foot is. If his standing foot is in the correct position, his knee is over the ball. You just say nosebleed. Well, his pass wasn't good enough. Well, why wasn't his pass good enough? 
You're shouting nosebleed. He's the problem. No, there's a lot more complicated, complex things going on than just a simple pass. But let's just move it on a bit. Ball goes out wide here, and it's a three versus four. Um, and you can see how far forward the other United players are. That there isn't anybody close enough to get back. Now, I'm telling you, if you're playing against a system that's really playing sort of like a hybrid five in midfield with, um, so I imagine you've got your four, two, and then you've got three, one up front. So you're playing against the three and the one defensively. You can't have your left back and right back go forward. You just can't. Not until you've got maintained possession of the ball in their half of the field, because you will get done on the blind side. Oh, here's the blind side from the other side because they're going to have numbers up on you. Both your left back and right back have to sit until you can get constructive ball possession and move it forward. They don't do that. So when this cross comes over here onto this back post, wapa, off it goes. It's just a tap in for either of these guys. Yes, Casemiro's given the ball away, but you have to look at the reasons why. Where's the team shape after that? How can you recover? Because you need to recover at every opportunity from when your team gives the ball away. And if your team is all up the field on holiday, yeah, it's the guy's fault to give the ball away, but there's a lot of blame to go around from the other players that just AFK running up the field. As the ball comes across, Bosch, little, it's a decent header to be fair, because he's going back across the goal. Um, he should have let this other kiddie run in and um, nail it, but he didn't. It's an all right goal, but it's United playing themselves into all sorts of trouble and letting their team go up the field when they just don't have control. I like to say, um, there's, a, there's a phrase I used to use for it and I can't think of it. It's like certain type of possession. It's not controlled possession. It's like safe possession. I used to use something else for it. When, I'm, um, when you know that you're, you're enabling your left and right back to go forward because you're pinning their left, back, uh, their left and right forwards to come back and defend you. They weren't in that situation. They did it and they got punished. Let's get on to the next goal. Okay, this is the next time Casemiro lo loses the ball and Liverpool score. But again... I want you to notice, first off, there's no shout for a man on. He's only really got one pass on, which would be straight here. He does dwell on the ball too long. It's completely and utterly his fault for doing that. He does try to buy the foul, which it isn't because the, um, I think it's a little Luis Diaz nicks the ball. But then we're going to play all of the other problems, which is, let's just say you get rid of Casemiro, okay? Because mainly by the, Coney maybe, mainly does the exact same thing, loses the ball in midfield the exact same way as Casemiro does later on in the game, and they score a goal and... But no one's going to say anything because what people do is fans and uneducated football people, they look for a scapegoat instead of saying, well, if all of our midfielders constantly keep getting caught on the ball in midfield and we keep losing goals from it, there's a fundamental problem with the system and the way that we're playing. If we lose that ball, how quick is it from the moment we lose the ball to the moment it goes into the goal? How many seconds is that? Can we recover possession after we lose the ball in midfield because you have to be able to because you're going to lose the ball in midfield this is football you're not always going to have the easiest game and you need to know when a mistake is made can we recover that ball as fast as possible right so let's just you can see here as he gone to nick the ball right there's one two three liverpool players in this little pressure pocket that they've created there isn't a man united player he stood still willing to come in and try to help or do anything. He's hiding behind the other player, so we could say four. He's yeah, look, covered, so we can say there's five Liverpool players, and there's no real Man United option for them to get rid of the ball and release it. Anyone he's going to go to is going to get challenged. So he can't really release the ball as fast as he wants to, except for this target up here to Xerxes, which he should have really done. But again, Xerxes he's new on the team. What's the chemistry like? Does he trust him with the ball? Is that why he's dwelled on it? And he's also flat on his feet. Can you see? He's not in a position where he's looking and calling for the ball. He's stood still, so you don't necessarily want to pass it to him. But personally, I think it's a good pass because he can turn and just run off down the field with it. But this is where I go to the other problems with Man United, which is still going to be there even when Casemiro is not on the field. Look at how many Liverpool players are around the ball now. Didn't bother moving, didn't bother moving, didn't bother moving. Um, I'm not sure who it is. I might uh, pick a name from Liverpool. I think it's Alexi McAllister. Runs in and he's here to pick up the scraps from Luis Diaz of uh, knocking the ball away. And they're off to the races. You still don't have anyone from United trying to run and get anywhere near this ball. And as we play this forward, you're going to see that nobody on United's team have any interest in winning the ball back. So this is why I would say... That, um, 
it's, it's a mentality thing and it's a bad thing in the team, right? So when, when that player that you don't like loses the ball, you don't go and work hard for him because you go, well, it's his mistake. I don't care. I don't care. No, he scored a goal. I don't care. He did it. He's the, he's the bad player, not me. I'm, I'm the good player. He's the bad player. And you can see that attitude in this team where they're not a team. Immediately, as soon as that ball's lost, everybody should be running back and trying to win the ball back. No one tries. I'm just going, well, it doesn't matter. So as we move this on, Dosh, look, look. Ball goes... Now they start to go, there's still lots of more time before the ball goes into the back of the net, right? He can still get back up and make a difference. They're not that close, but I want to show you this clip by the edge of the box. Here we go. Right. So now, United have got numbers up. Yes, Casemiro has lost the ball. Yes, he's done something wrong. But this is the other part I'm saying about this is where your team bails you out for making mistakes. When your goalkeeper bails out your centre-back for making mistakes. You know, that's how you play as a team. Right now, this ball needs to have as much pressure on it as possible. Look at the distance and the space that he gives Mo Salah. He gives him all the time in the world. You've got a simple runner here, Martinez. Guess what he does? Because he's not a good defender. I'm tired of people trying to say on like... um. You know, these idiot TV shows. Ooh, he's such a good... No, he's absolutely pants. He might be able to pass a ball, but marking a simple run into the box, he can't do it. Watch what happens. Goes in, goes in. Still no pressure on the ball. Still kind of jogging. Look, right behind him. There's a striker. Well, not a striker. There's a left winger walking in behind you. All he's got to do is take two steps back and mark him. Doesn't bother. Doesn't bother. Still not trying to press the ball. Move forward just a little bit. Backing up, still not putting pressure on the ball, still not marking Luis Diaz. And this is what I'm talking about is the rest of United could have, you know, covered for that mistake. Um, I think this is Bruno Fernandes could have carried on and putting pressure on that ball. If he's holding him up and not letting him go past, you pressure the ball fast, really fast for him and try to make a challenge. You don't. He's jogging. He's walking. No interest. That's not my mistake. It's, it's somebody else's. This is not a team. This is not a team that you want to play football for. All of a sudden, Bosch, Bosch, it's in the back of the goal, and Martinez is sat there watching him. Whole time. Yeah, is so everyone going to blame Casemiro? Yeah, should they? Yeah, probably. But it's not all his fault. The fact that that ball's not pressured, the fact that that's an easy pass into the middle, the fact that Martinez doesn't bother to mark him, they are all going to stay there next week when Casemiro's not in the side. That is terrible. Let's get on to the next goal. Just before we do, I want to show you this little nick here because Casemiro, I actually thought he was fouled, but he wasn't. Dosh, there's the little touch. And then he goes down to, onto the ground. Yeah, he's just not, you know, not quite good enough. He's a little bit too old. He's getting caught out on the ball. So as a manager, the other thing you do is you don't put players in situations that they're going to get caught out on the ball. And if they are getting caught on the ball, you've got to look at all of his teammates around him to see what they are doing right and wrong. If they're doing all the things right and he's still doing it, fair, but they're not. There's loads of problems on this football team. But let's get on to that last Liverpool goal. So here we've got Kobe Menu receiving the ball in midfield, and it's the exact same problem that Casemiro faces. So now he's got no one to pass to. He's isolated when the ball comes into him, and he loses the ball. One, two, three, four, five Liverpool players are forward, putting not real pressure on the ball, but they're cutting down the passing lanes, making it really difficult for United to pass through them. Okay? So in that situation, you go over them, not through them. Okay? But Kobe Mainu, same problem as Casemiro. All of a sudden, he's got no one to pass to. One, just out the screen. Two, three, four, five players. No one's close to showing for the ball. No one is in this area here. He really can't do anything with it. And he just gets muscled off the ball and loses the ball. So here we go. There's that simple pass in again. Right. So just like Casemiro lost it, Mainu lost it. There's no cover. Just like there wasn't for Casemiro just like there isn't for Manu, that comes down to too many United players too far forward without actual structured possession again. And all of a sudden, Liverpool are on the counter-attack. This time, it's slightly different. It's 1-2 versus 1-2-3-4. Last time, at least Casemiro was there. It was 3 versus 4. Now it's 2 versus 4. And on they run. Man United have some serious, serious tactical problems and shape problems and team t- morale. And there's so many things wrong. When people say that it's Casemiro and it's defensive... Mid- they don't know what they're talking about. I genuinely don't know what they're talking about. There are so many problems with these players thinking, I don't know, running down the field because they're Roberto Carlos or, you know, Danny Alves or these defenders. And they're not these players. 
and they're trying to act that way and they're just not good enough to they need to sit back get possession move the ball forward if they're going to pass it through or just get it forward to their flanks and sit as a unit and try to not concede goals because if they keep playing like this playing it into those centre midfielders every team in the Premier League is going to pick that off because their left and right backs have gone walkabout every single time it's not the first time it's every single time simple pass out of Mo Salah but this is going to crack you right up look where the goalkeeper is He's covering that side of the goal. Good job, Mo Salah. Actually hits the ball really poorly. He doesn't put it into the corner. He kind of puts it about there. That's where I reckon he puts it. Okay. Um, but the keeper's not even trying to close the angle down. He's not even coming out to try to make it difficult for him. He's just stood there going, go on. Slot, slot in there. Look, push. In it goes. It's not even in the corner. And Arna's nowhere near it. United have got some awful problems. They've cut the international break to lick their wounds and convince themselves that Casemiro is the problem and the new guy coming in, he's going to fix all of their issues. And I'm telling you right now, he's not going to. Those left and right backs are still going to bomb forward. The wingers aren't going to come in and give him any options to play inside. There isn't going to be any combination play through that midfield. They're going to really struggle. Other than that, I'll see you next time on Cash Yells at United. I mean, uh, Cash Talks Football. Thank <music> you.